This is reclaimed old growth pine. I got it out of a wall of an old house that I helped remodeling a little bit a couple of years ago, and now it's time to use it. In this video I will be building two identical bedside tables in an Art Nouveau inspired style. I began by rough cutting my pieces, then I went through each one that was going to become a leg, looking for knots and splits and decided how to orient the leg to cut around as many defects as possible. With the placement of the leg inside the blank decided, I planed the two inside faces flat and square to each other. The word bean there means leg in Swedish, I like to label my parts on the end grain at this stage to easily see what's what in the pile. Here's another piece for example, this is a drawer divider that needs to be thicknessed to 10mm. On my old bench that would have been an annoying affair with jigs, but the new tail vise handles these thin parts with ease. And here's a pair of side panels being resawn. The surface of this board was a bit gross, but all of that gets thicknessed away, that's coming up right here. And yeah, there's a lot more pieces to square up, but showing it all would make this a feature length film, so we're gonna jump ahead to the next step, which was to make some patterns for the curved pieces, starting with the cabriole legs. So I transferred some measurements from my half scale drawing, and then connected the dots. These curves don't need to be any particular radii, and it would be a constantly changing radius anyway, so I just freehand it to look good to my eye. Then I sawed it out and cleaned it up. I also made a pattern for the lower rails, they are symmetrical, so I could fit two half patterns on the same piece, one half for the front and one half for the side rails. With a bit of imagination, here's how the parts will eventually fit together. The leg pattern is not only the shape, but also has all the joinery laid out on it, so I can take the tenon thickness and location from it to scribe onto the rail pieces. Then I sawed out the tenons. Here are the upper side rails, getting tenons scribed. I clamped them all together in the vise to be a bit more efficient. Going back to the legs, I used the marks on the template to lay out a groove that will house a side panel. I also have what I guess I have to call a middle side rail, and these have stub tenons that will sit in the groove in the legs. I could then trim these stub tenons to exact length. These are not really going to be structural, the main thing for that is the longer tenons in the upper and lower rails. These stubs are more for alignment, but I still want to give them as much glue surface as possible, for good measure. Speaking of lower rails, I then placed these up against the knife mark I previously took from the template, and scribed around the tenon to get my mortise placement. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to cut the upper mortises soon too, but before that I have to make a groove in the upper rail, because this will determine the size of this tenon. So I set up my combination plane to make a cut matching the groove that I chopped in the leg. With that done, I could then place the tenon on the leg and scribe the length of the upper mortise. I cut my tenons to length and summon them to a 45 degree angle for where two mortises intersect at the top of the back legs. Then I brought out some oak to make durable drawer runners. These get some very small tenons to join them to the front divider. At the back, these drawer runners will need an extra part to join to, as I don't have a divider here. You absolutely could put a divider in the back as well, but then you'd have mortise and tenons joining the runners to the back divider, and two more joining the divider to the legs. These blocks will simply be glued edge to edge to the legs, letting me get away with a couple fewer joints. And that is the last of the joinery, so here I decided to do a dry fit of everything, see that it all lines up the way it should, and it did, so I could move on to sewing some shape into all these blocks. I trimmed the legs to length on the shooting board. Then I could saw the back of the foot as well, which I saved for now so that it would be more stable on the shooting board. I took all eight legs to this stage, then went to work on the lower side rails. A bit of clean up after the saw to fire out the curves. With the shaping of these parts mostly done, I attach to the lower drawer runners. Here I don't need any joinery, they just glue edge to edge onto the lower side rails. And I wanted to do it now after most of the curve work, since they will make it a little bit more difficult to hold onto the rails with a vise. It is, however, crucially before cutting the curve to match the outside swell of the legs, since that would make it impossible to get these clamps on. You'll see what I'm talking about in a moment. I cut off the excess and trimmed the runner flush with the shoulder of the rail. I then dry fit these rails to the legs again to mark the outside swell that I mentioned. I think you can see how this would make it near impossible to clamp the drawer runners if they were to be glued in place any later, since this curve removes the opposite edge. Next up we have the front rail, and this also gets a shape traced from the template.
This rail also gets curved forwards to make a serpentine front, so I traced and sawed that as well. And finally, it needs to be shaped to match the legs, and because of the forward curve, this had to be carved rather than planed. I dry fit the rails and legs yet again, this time to blend the undersides together. It is time to carve a bead along the edge of these parts and describe this I set up a divider. I was so close to making a whole new marking gauge for this job, because a standard marking gauge can't make a line along a changing curvature. I had the parts for this new gauge ready on the bench and everything, reached for some tool on the wall and my eyes fell on the divider and I realized that's obviously a great choice for this task. So that was a really silly side project I narrowly avoided. With a slightly smaller setting I marked the depth of the bead and then I went to work on removing everything down to that line. This is why I never smoothed the legs or rails properly. I just needed the general shape but the final surface is what remains after the carving. My shoulder knife came in handy for deepening these cuts and with the leg held in a bar clamp on the bench I chopped away the waist. Initially I kept the cross section of the legs very angular, then I began rounding it over with chisel and spokeshave. I didn't round the bead though, figuring there is so little material to play with there, so it'd be better to save that for after assembly to make sure it flows correctly across the different pieces, because the bead continues along the edge of the side rails as well, and this was carved in much the same way. The front rail, with its slightly more involved decorations, needed some extra care taken to outline the shape with different gouges before I could come in and lower the surrounding surface. At this stage I also brought down the flat parts of the legs to their final size as the last thing to do on the legs before glue up. But there is one more batch of components that need to be done, and thus the panels that will go between the side rails. To get the width of these I marked inside the grooves and measured on the actual piece rather than the drawing to be sure that the panel fits in the real world. I scribed this width onto the boards and took them down to size. This is simply the same length as the side rails with stub tunnels, so no measuring needed, I can just compare them to that part. These are supposed to be raised panels, which I think is a funny term since it really consists of lowering material. Like, I get that the end result looks like the middle of the panel is raised compared to the edges, but calling the process panel raising 
Just feels a bit humorous to me. You're not tricking anyone, that panel is just as raised as it was before. You just made the edge thinner. But anyway, that is what I did next. Notice that there is a cutoff from the panels as a sacrificial piece when planing across the grain to stop the splintering when the blade exits the wood. I also did sand this with some 100 grit wrapped around a dowel as I wasn't getting a perfect surface on this cross grain cut. After the ends were done I did the long sides. And finally glue up begins. I broke it down into a few sub-assemblies, starting with gluing the middle and lower side rails together, since they wouldn't be possible to clamp to each other when I put the panel in place. I did this with the legs dry fit on their tenons to keep the two rails aligned. A clamping coil goes on top to keep the clamp from crushing the groove walls in the middle rail. Once that was dry, I could move on to the other parts making up one side of a table. So that's the legs, side rails and panels. The panels are meant to float, meaning they are loose in the frame to allow expansion and contraction. But I put a spot of glue in the middle of the ends to keep them vertically positioned. Otherwise they could fall out of the upper groove when they shrink. And since my workshop is not heated when I'm not there, and therefore quite high in humidity, I have to count on a considerable amount of shrinkage when a piece moves into a home. While that dried, I cut out the shape of the drawer divider, the last part that was still in oversized square state. The dividers could then be glued to the drawer runners. When the side glue ups were dry I went to work on flushing up the legs and rails. Since they had been carved independently they had some discrepancies. Then I rounded over the bead. And finally it was time for the big glue up, although I guess it's not really that involved because of the sub-assemblies I had done. Just the front and back rails and the drawer support structure getting glued to the side sections.
I also had these blocks that support the back ends of the drawer runners, they just get glued onto the back legs. I flushed up the divider. And checked for square. And the front rail was carved flush with the knees. The beads on the front rail were then given their final shape. I made a sanding block that could handle both the convex and concave curves and sanded my chisel work with some 100 grit. And that is where I'm going to call it an episode, so next time we'll get these tables done with our tabletops and two serpentine drawers each. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon.